This is the Art Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the Amazon best-selling book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. In the Marketing Minute, we answer your questions to help your art career. Brought to you by artmarketing.com, the place to go to learn more about marketing. Now, here's your host, art magazine publisher, Eric Rhodes. Thank you, Jim Kipping, and thank you for joining us today. I am here, my goal is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist. So let's get right to today's questions. Question from Christina Hillen in Buffalo, New York, who says, please keep the marketing minutes coming. They are very inspiring. Thank you, Christina. What's your question? My question is, I have no idea how to get my work known on a larger scale. Where do I begin? Well, I I don't know if you mean larger scale, meaning larger paintings, but I assume you mean how do you get your work known on a larger scale? I, I recommend that every artist have two strategies and sometimes three, but let's start with two. I think as an artist, you start out local and you really get well-known locally. We have a product that we created called Art Market in a Box. It's really designed to get people to become kind of the known artist locally in their community and really be the person that everybody relies on for charity auctions and getting your name out there. And anytime there's an artist mentioned in the media, it's you. And anytime that Uh, anything's going on, it's like you, 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 right? We want you to become a local star. That's very important because you can sell a lot locally and there's a lot of things you can do locally you can't do nationally. But the downside is that uh, sometimes local doesn't work. Let's say you live in a community where the, where, where, you know, your community just isn't, uh, the jobs aren't there. People aren't making any money. And so if you are reliant entirely on one marketplace, then it's a problem for you. That's why we recommend also a national strategy, which means getting into some art galleries or selling nationally in other places. Now, what I try to do is I try to put myself or I try to recommend that you go into galleries where things are really crushing it, where people are making money and people are doing it, you know, like a place like Silicon Valley, for instance, uh, because, uh, or, you know, sometimes it's a different place. You know, some markets get hot for whatever reason. Try to be in those markets or maybe places that people go on vacation when they're allowed to go on vacation. But if you had, let's say you had a gallery in Hawaii and everybody was going to Hawaii and now nobody's going to Hawaii, well, you're not going to make any money from that gallery. So you want to have, that's why you want to have two or three. I don't recommend more than about that. You know, some people will do more, but you've got to have enough quality that you can send to the galleries. And so having two or three galleries in two or three different locations uh, around the globe so that you've got a little economic stability can be a really good thing. And so I think the way to scale, to get known on a larger basis, first off, get yourself a, a, a way to sell, and that is through a gallery. Now, you can sell direct as well, and there's a whole other dialogue about that. But the idea is to, you've got to help your gallery. You can't rely on them entirely. Because it, it, let's say I'm in a gallery with, I'm in three galleries now, and I'm in a gallery with uh, 30, 40, 50 other artists in some cases. And so, you know, what's going to make me stand out? And the thing that's going to make me stand out is my name, my brand, right? So you want people to seek you out. And the way to do that is you got to build a brand. So that's when you start your advertising strategy. That's when you start a social media strategy. Although I caution you, social media tends to be our friends, tends to be people who are not necessarily art buyers, not always. I mean, you can get them, but you've got to have a specific strategy to get them. And then, you know, you've got to work it and you've got to work it constantly. You've got to just keep it out there year after year after year. As long as you're in business, you've got to be working on your advertising and your and your uh, your visibility, your publicity, things like that. So the way to begin is, you know, start out by building your brand, getting known and getting used to selling things. Uh, maybe maybe ramping it up locally, but then starting out nationally. Now, here's a question from Sean Stanley in Charleston, South Carolina. Hello, Sean. Sean says, recently my local art center had a blowout sale. You could ask $10 to $100 for your paintings. Uh, I took lots of smallish ones, 11 by 14s being the largest. I'm a hobbyist. I made about $300. People love some some of them. It helped build my confidence a lot. What should my next step be? Well, there's nothing like selling a painting to build your confidence, Sean. Congratulations. I think that's terrific. And, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. And 
pricing is one of those difficult things. You know, I'm not a big low price person, but I also know that when you're starting out, you're not going to command a higher price until you get to the point where you're a little bit stronger and then you can start commanding it. But I think just getting used to being able to sell paintings is a really good thing. And so do more of that. So what I recommend is you get yourself an art show in a local restaurant or something. You may or may not be strong enough to do that yet, but get some experience, you know, set up a little sale. Maybe you set up a sale at your house for your friends or an open studio. Get used to selling, get to the point where you're selling. But all of us need to always work on getting better because it's getting better that also builds our confidence. It's nice to sell paintings. Uh, but it's nice to sell paintings at higher prices ultimately. And when you start getting, uh, instead of $100 for painting, you start getting 200 and then 400 and then 1,000, then 2,000, then 5,000, and then 10,000, then 100,000, you know, that's going to make a big difference. Now, some of us never get there, but a lot of us do. I'm not, but I think that means that you want to be constantly pushing yourself to elevate your skills. And one of the ways to do that is to enter art competitions because now you're, you're up against other people and it does something in your brain. It clicks something off in your brain and makes you try harder and makes you step up and makes you say, can I make this painting better? So I think that's a good next step, trying to to get some art competitions. And you get that validation if you win. Now, not everybody wins, and a lot of people enter many, many times and never win, and sometimes they do. And so that helps build confidence. But I think, you know, starting out with a little local thing, I would, you know, do something at a local diner, restaurant, something like that, and see if you can sell some more $100 paintings. And once you get some more under your belt, maybe you can develop relationships with the people who bought those paintings, then sell them some more, and then gradually ratchet up your prices to 150 and 200 and 300 and so on. And uh, I, and if you're a hobbyist and, and you only want to be a hobbyist, that's cool too. There's nothing wrong with that. So uh, I, I congratulations. I applaud you on that. Well, this has been the Art Marketing Minute with me, Eric Rhodes. My goal in life is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist and to help your dreams actually come true. So if you want to submit questions, simply email eric at artmarketing.com. And to learn more about marketing ideas, you can visit artmarketing.com. Thanks for listening.